All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Pat Taste Performance. Today, in the driveway, we have the iconic Troy built horse rototiller, PTO driven, powered by a Kohler Magnum 8. I've actually been kicking my ass a little bit. But anyway, let's get back to this beast of a machine. This is like the heyday of Troy built. Uh, Made in the USA, not made in the USA, assembled global components. This thing is pure American steel power. What's cool about this machine is that you can unbolt this tiller attachment and put different things on here. Snow blower, right here is your snow plow attachment. Um, just a multitude of things. A great, great, great um, part of a American history and farming and do-it-yourself culture. These machines still fetch a pretty penny. Now, uh, this thing is here for a no start, no run condition. And I started to make a video and I stopped because I was just getting frustrated and I felt it wasn't good footage because I wasn't getting frustrated. Um, took apart the carburetor. I cleaned it. I actually ended up replacing all the fuel lines because I felt like they were collapsed. So anyway, let's get access to the carburetor. We're going to take off this wing nut. We're going to slide the engine cover off here. Let's put, so we don't lose track, everything in there. So right here is your pre-filter. And then your air filter is underneath. 7 sixteenths. I have my Milwaukee snow. We'll just make quick work of that. Okay. And then this cover slides right off. Air filter housing. So like I said, we're going to put all that in there. Now, if you have access to your carburetor, I'm going to show you how I ran the fuel line. Alright, so here is your fuel tank. <clears throat> and your shuttle valve is here as well. Alright, the fuel lines ran up and through the machine and back down. Now what I did is I ran the machine ran the fuel lines down and under the shroud, out of the way. I put this um, hose clamp there. And I ran it back up. Now I got the machine to run, but it wouldn't stay running at all. So let me show you why. Ratchet quarter inch bolts. There's three here, but only two are left. I'm gonna snap those out. Actually, let me put you guys back on the stuff. I'm gonna bring you guys down to this level. Okay, so these two got to go. Okay. And can you guys see this little doohickey here? Now look at this, right here. This is a fuel pump. I found out the hard way. Fuel in, fuel out. Now, when I couldn't get this thing started, I initially pulled. I initially pulled this hose out, and on the other side too, and I blew compressed air to it. And a lot of crap came out, and I got the machine to run. I thought, you know, easy peasy, one, two, three, call the guy up, you know, come come pick this thing up. Well, Kemp to come get it and actually died in the driveway, which I guess is a good thing. And uh, here we are now again. So the reason why I say it needs a fuel pump is now look, I'm going to start this thing. No fuel is coming in at all. 
Nothing. So that means the fuel pump is needed. So let's replace this fuel pump. So I gotta undo my hose clamp. And pull my line out. Okay, see how we're getting fuel to there? Actually, let me put a bolt in there. All right, put a bolt in there. And let's tighten this down. Now, why am I not using the fuel shuttle valve? Because it's old and dainty. And you don't want to create another problem, so let's push this out of the way. Okay, and let's figure out how this thing is hooked up. All right, so it seems like there are two Phillips that hold this thing in on the bottom underneath. Hard to get in. You know, let's get our new fuel filter out. So I have never done a fuel filter before. Today's fuel filter was supplied by Amazon. Um, I think it was like 15, 16 bucks. The only reason why I chose Amazon, even quote eBay, is because this guy had this machine for a lot longer than I anticipated and the guy's getting a little antsy. So Amazon we go. And I've never done a fuel pump before. So let's see. I'm trying to, this is going to be a how-to video for me and you. Come on, there's, let's open this thing. So fuel pumps in my world, diesel world, are electric. Apparently, this one is vacuum. Alright, so let's see what we got here. Don't know how these work. Let's take a look. Go down into the box and see what we got here. Do you guys got a good shot of this? Okay. Okay, let's get some coins. Alright, so I guess this is the pump itself. Let's open this up. And so here's our fuel pump. Don't ask me how this works. Okay, see that? I guess that's your vacuum. Pump, pump, pump. And I guess these are our fittings. Okay, look, see? Coming in, coming out. So I'm assuming. We install it, we gotta see. Let's see. And these are our numerous fittings. There's a snap ring in here, I have no idea why. It's crush washers. So let's just see. This gasket will go in here. Yay, we know that. I really don't want to pull these out. Ooh. All right, so these just push in. Let's not touch that. At least we know we have this gasket. All right, let's get this old pump out. I hope. These. All right, let me get my long screwdriver. Right, so I got my gear wrench, number two Phillips with a nice long T handle. This was actually loose. What the hell? It's starting to rain. All right, you might be working in the rain for a little bit. Hopefully, you don't mess up. You know what? I'm gonna pull everything out. We are cramped in my garage. I'm gonna have my baby sitting outside, my Arians. Oh, I really don't like to do that. That's why I don't like to work in the rain. Um, 
All right. So that fuel pump is really loose. I don't know if it's supposed to be. Did it wiggle its way out? Let's, I wonder if we tighten it. Will we get it to prime? That's not supposed to be loose. Now, it wasn't supposed to rain at all. But it just freaking opened up. Look at this. Pouring. So let's see. That's nice and tight. Yeah, these are really loose. Do you see that? going to say if we can get this to prime now. Doesn't hurt, right? Tiny lefty loosey. I'm going to take out these two screws. They're right underneath. I mean, listen, I can't. If you guys can't figure that out, I don't know what to tell you. This is out now. Yes, fuel pump feels like it's out. Okay. Here it is in all its glory. You guys see that? This is your stock fuel pump. Obviously, it's rebuildable or serviceable, but I'm not even going to touch it. I said, I do not want to open up Pandora's box. And that was... Okay, so you have that and that. Right, so let's get our new fuel pump. Okay. Now, did this have flow arrows? Yes. See the flow arrows here and here? So, we will do the same thing. I'm just making sure. So that these all line up. Now because we're doing a gasket, and it's rubberized, what I like to do is put some oil on this thing. Anything. WD-40, you name it. Just any kind of lubricant. So. Nice generous coating. 
we are going to stick the pump inside the hole. Alright, so I think we're in there. Alright, my rule of thumb is to always start by hand. But I can't start it by hand. Because they're just in there. So we kind of just have to go with mechanical instinct and dripping fuel. And go, but just by feel. Right? I'm just dripping fuel. Oh, wow. The problems are the deep. Now the house is going to sink a little bit, but oh well. That's her motivation to divert funds to a bigger detached garage. So anyway. <clears throat> let's let's get this out of the way. I'm treating this machine with a lot of respect as you guys can see. This machine is older than me. And unfortunately you can't say that about the new stuff. The only way it'll last that long is if it's not being used. And sometimes when you don't use equipment, you know, it goes to crap anyway. Get some light. Sure, the other hole lines up. Yes, it does. So let's. No. So that caught two. Now, as far as tightness goes, I mean, yeah, I am trying to make this tight because there is a seal. So, obviously, the rule of thumb still applies, not really tight. Obviously, with this T-handle, it makes it a lot easier to get tight. Alright, now the fun part. We're in there. Now we have to see these fittings. I still have no idea what the snap ring is for. Now, let's spread the guts out. Let's see what these crush washers do. Right? Do they fit here? No. No. So they have no bar or nothing on there. So here we are with fuel flow out and out. So oh, so here's the cool part. So we need straights or 90s. See that? That's that's the difference. So hopefully I left enough fuel line and. You don't have to reroute or extend anything. Now let's take a look at these fittings. There's a 90 with a nice size opening. Here's another 90. This actually looks a little small. And look at these straight ones. Look at the openings. Look, this is really skinny. So let's open this up with the 90. We're just going to spray some lube. And we are just going to 
click this in. I hope. Right? That still doesn't even feel right. Alright, so I guess we gotta push this all the way in. Alright, so that's 90 to 90, which we need. Okay. And then we have another 90. Let's get the big fat one. And let's just see with our fuel on. Get this crank vent out of the way. Alright, if we stick that here, right, is that gonna put an awkward bend on the fuel? We just do a 90. Excuse me. Or, if we just go straight, then they'll interfere with the spring. So it's just going to be a 90 degree is facing out just like the factory. Alright, so let's do that. Oh wait, I spray some loop. And it's alright. Not going to dry. And please say a prayer that this is my issue. Because if not, I'm gonna be upset. Why aren't you going in? I wonder if we angle this down a little bit? Is it less of a bend? If we angle this down... Right. But if you go straight up, if you go down, yes, let's angle this down a little bit. That's running. Right. Turn this down. <clears throat> no, some of the bitch to push it. It's plastic, so I'm trying not to. Oh, you know what? I guess I can't. It has to be. Straight in or nothing. All right, so we're in there. Oh, excuse me, remember, we're cramped today. We're working cramped. Oh shit! I left my phone out. So, Lord, hear our prayer. Let's undo this. You guys got it. A good shot on that. Actually, let me take you off the map. So we have everything out in the open. This is what we have here. Your fuel pump. Can you guys, I don't know if you guys can see the two screws underneath, at least get one. You see that? That's one. I don't know if you guys see the other. And you guys can see, here's the fuel flow arrows. Can you guys see these arrows? It means fuel flow goes out and up into the engine into the car. So, let's see what we got. I never really worked on one of these before, but it's just nuts and bolts, and once you understand how something works, 
you could fix it. And hopefully, I understand this concept of a fuel pump. And we'll see if it works. Tighten this thing. I can't make it too tight because remember now we're working with plastic. Now, let's see if we get fuel flow. Please. Yeah, buddy. That's it. Winner, winner, chicken, mother dinner. This thing is going to run. This thing is going to run. Oh, my God. So, <clears throat> don't want to get a little eager, but this thing has been kicking my ass. Now, if you guys know, I get my mechanical, do-it-yourself, know-how, never ending drive from my father and growing up my father yeah, we were around we were helping him out I can't say the same for my other siblings but I have a lot of things because of him and I'm going to always have things because of him but from working on cars to my profession, the whole mind, you know, we couldn't really, you know, financially afford to take things places unless we really, really had to. So, that's how I got my knickknack of small engines. And actually, believe it or not, my first lawnmower, I bought non-running for the house and my father helped me fix it. And it kind of started from there. I think he had no idea that it was going to kind of turn into this, but I'm sure he's happy that it has. <laughs> because we could fish forever now. And uh, so my father retired, and he has this thing of collecting and restoring Troy built rototillers. So, ironically, he came by and he helped me with this, and we thought we had this running, but we did it. And then my father went away, and I kind of panicked, you know, without him, but... You know, like I said, I kind of figured it out how this thing works and runs. So now, we should be good to go. I really don't want to start this in the house. Let's see. Because the exhaust blows out. Alright guys, winner winner chicken dinner. Thank you Lord. We can call this thing a wrap. So let's uh let's wipe this stuff out. Can't believe this, this freaking fuel pump. So you know what? I learned something new today. Hopefully you guys did too. I learned how to diagnose a bad fuel pump. Um 
you know what? I guess it's a good habit when the fuel pump goes bad. You should clean out your carburetor because, like I said, when I blew out this fuel tank, a lot of gritty stuff came out. So I'm going to put this back together, even though it could be tough because. Everything just got rained on. So let's. God, I'm so happy to get this out of the way. As you guys can tell, this is also a big piece of equipment. And now, I can keep my Husqvarna inside until. All right, guys, my GoPro ended up dying, but uh, I just muzzled through it. Obviously, the way we took it off is the way we put it back together. So, uh, yeah, next more she runs. New fuel pump. <sighs> Choke up. Actually, maybe we'll have it down because we had it running before.
All right, baby, that's a wrap. I'd hate to say that it's a, a pleasure to see this thing go, <laughs> nonetheless. But, learn something new, and there's absolutely a ton of value in that. <clears throat> you can't put a price on good, solid education. So anyway, if you guys found this video helpful, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. Oh, and the parts that I used, well, the fuel pump, I will screenshot the, uh, the exact one that I used off of Amazon. If it's cheaper on eBay or cheaper someplace else, by all means, go grab and get it. The only reason why I did it um, is, like I said, Amazon was very pressing. Uh, I had it here by Wednesday. So that's that. So here we go. One last time. Troy built horse, call the magnemate, no start, diagnose the bad fuel pump, also clean the carburetor, replaced the fuel lines, alright, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of Pat Tay's Performance.